Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you, Mace, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, the story, 15, the story starts like this. 15 years ago, I lost hope of real change through negotiations between the Palestinians and the Israeli occupation. For years, I had been working as a legal advisor to the Palestinian delegation. I realized that we need to invest more in restoring people power to organize and shift the power imbalance. 10 years ago, the entire Arab world realized the same thing, and it was the Arab Spring, and there was an opportunity. I had learned the community organizing approach with Marshall Gans at Kennedy School and decided to give it a try. Marshall had planned a trip to Jordan in 2010, and that trip boosted my experiment. Together, we trained 30 NGO leaders on organizing, and he gave a lecture to, in the municipality hall for 250 people. I left the job I was in then and gave this experiment my all. I started by creating a small group of women leaders and passionate learners around the dining table in my house every Tuesday. And it continued to grow, for, to grow and it stayed for two years. I spent days translating the material, looking for the right words in Arabic. I didn't know where things would go. And yes, it was a risk, but it was a response to a need. Campaigns, uh, we started working with campaigns. In the first year, we trained three nascent campaigns. 5,000 reads started reading for joy in Jabal and Nadif area in a campaign called Six Minutes. Students with disability made the University of Jordan accessible with Sarwata. I saw some of them here. A group of young people uh, insisted that there is no honor in the so-called honor crimes against women in Jordan. We had progress and we had wins. And in October 2011, Mais and I decided to establish a health organization to coach leaders as they organize collective action and build people power for freedom and for justice. The following four years were good. We were accompanying and training leaders in Jordan, Palestine, Egypt, and Lebanon. They won and we contributed to it. The Brever law, draft law, was stopped from passing in the Knesset and another land grab in Palestine was prevented. I see Huda is here from there. Palestinian Druze started uh, refusing the compulsory service in the Israeli army. More daycare centers for working parents were established because of Sadaqa campaign. These successes, however, came with a lot of challenge and a lot of sacrifice. Two of the trainers working with us got arrested. The Syrian revolution became war. The war on ISIS became an excuse for the Arab countries to limit freedom of expression, freedom of association and assembly. Mais left with her husband to Sweden and Ashraf Hamza here with us left for his master's degree in the UK. And I also needed to take perspective. With Marshall's help, I returned to Harvard on a research fellowship, reflected, analyzed our journey, and learned about social and political movements. So the question is, what happened to Ahel? My colleague Rim Manna held the fort. It was the lowest budget, and she was almost alone. She coached two campaigns, one with the Palestinian students at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and another with private school uh, female teachers for their rights in Jordan. Both won and with sacrifices. Two school teachers were fired because of their organizing. But the campaign continued and it expanded with help of my colleague Rahaf Abu Duha and the popular education program. In 2017, Reem and I, we renewed our commitment to Ahel. This time, I, I dare say, we were wiser politically. 
we realized that achieving the campaign goal was important, but also very important to our context is maintaining people's agency and building leadership capacity for collective action. So resilience and expansion became the guiding words and that required a different approach at AHEL itself. We established an advisory committee to support us, many of them here. We launched the first edition of our online course, Organizing and Leading Collective Action for Change. Rawani Zain joined us to lead the teaching and learning department. Reem now leads campaign coaching department and Farah Halase joined her as she builds a larger team of coaches in the Arab world. Um, more campaigns. Latka Bruna in Lebanon got commitment from 2,000 families against child marriage, recruited men to join the women force, and actively stopped more than 35 child marriages. Ibni campaign made the Minister of Health commit to providing vocational care for children with disability in Jordan. And as all that happened, with my colleague Yumna Muhammad, we created the Athar Network for community or organizers, not only for better organizing, but for solidarity and resilience. So is it all good now? Yes, it is better, but we are at a crossroad. To have more impact, we need more civic organizations and nonprofits and unions to adopt organizing, to give the power back to the people. Providing services is important. Advocating for others is great, but holding the space for people to lead collective action for the change they want, they need, is crucial, especially now. So we're focusing the next years to uh, invest in more work with organizations, and we're open for anyone who is interested um, to meet and work with them. Um, finally, on behalf of AHEL team, I thank you all for being with us today. Uh, you are our support and our protection network. Uh, stay, um, stay committed to us and stay following us. I would have liked for you to meet the whole team, but time and Zoom is limited. So I'm going to leave you with a short video uh, of a normal day at AHEL. And uh, that was last Monday. Enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, that's us. Um, I'm gonna just take four more minutes of your time and explain to you the programs we have or the strategy we've had in the past and how it's gonna change or evolve in the coming years. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah, okay. So basically our main strategy as you may have guessed is coaching campaigns and we've coached 24 so far. Um, we support grassroots grassroot leaders in their collective action for change. Sometimes it's accompanying them in their journey. Sometimes it's inter inter specific interventions with coaching or training. Sometimes it's a coaching clinic or a coaching hour. And recently we've been developing this program uh, for how to help people lead teams. And that, um, in that, we have worked with 20 or coached 24 campaigns. Uh, in them, there's 1,200 leaders. And we're very proud that uh, the campaigns we've coached, they've managed to build 
not just one leadership team, but multiple leadership teams. We have 150 oh, leadership okay. teams. You see the countries where those campaigns are. These are some of the uh, campaigns I've mentioned uh, during my story, but also um, others that have not been mentioned yet. Um, the causes are different. Uh, protection from sexual harassment with the Hadda campaign, detainees' rights with uh, families for freedom for Syrian um, detainees and absentees, um, elections, uh, women's rights, and so on. The second um, area of our work or program is the teaching and learning program. And in it, we have multiple um, uh, activities or tactics. The main one is our online course, uh, teaching, organizing, and leadership. Um, and the second course is one that we teach offline here in Jordan, feminism and organizing. We run public narrative workshops and organizing workshops online and offline, tailor-made and, you know, the classical. Um, 5,000 people have been uh, trained or coached during those years. You can see the red dots are those who belong to campaigns. And the yellow dots are those who went through a course or a workshop but don't necessarily belong to a campaign that we coach. The third uh, program we have is the Athar Network. The idea here is to bring uh, different uh, organizers and leaders to, in the Arab world together for resilience, for solidarity. We have learning seasons there. We document different uh, campaigns from the Arab world in a podcast called Athar that I uh, recommend you listen to. And uh, we encourage the matchmaking between them so that they um, help each other. And we encourage the space of the Athar network to be a space for calling people to action. Um, Athar has 93 leaders currently from six countries, but we're taking it slowly with Athar. It's just one year, one and a half year old. Um, we will expand later when we have the roots uh, stable. Um, you may ask, how did we do, do all this? We're a small team. So we built the Train the Coaches program to have more coaches able to uh, support campaigns, even if they're not uh, staff at AHEL. We built the Train the Trainers program, the same idea. They're star students that become trainers. And the Athar network is not dependent on AHEL staff. Uh, every country we are in has its own national leadership team from the members themselves. And these circles uh, feed each other. Like some leaders that come through our teaching and learning end up going to the coaching campaigns, then to Athar, and Athar bring more people and so forth. At the heart of it is our um, great team. And our great team is just 12 people. But the trainers and the facilitators uh, we have uh, developed um, are, are a bigger number, and they are different countries in the Arab world. 